Hey, Yins. Happy Wednesday, August 24th. Back with another episode of this podcast. You know, took a couple days away. I've just been dealing with, you know, just something pretty personal. Um, for those that are, you know, don't follow me on social media or not on social media. Um, over the weekend, my granddad passed away at the age of 93. So been went to his funeral and all that. And uh, it's just been really affecting me. It's honestly the first time I've really um, lost a grandparent. You know, I've I did not meet his wife, my grandmom, Helen. She died the year before I was born. Uh, I've had my grandma and grandpa on my mom's side, my grandma, my granddad on my dad's side for the first basically 25 years of my life. So it's definitely been hitting me a lot harder, but, you know, back now. And, you know, we're going you know, to talk penguins, you know, definitely to get my mind off it in just because, you know, I, I love talking penguins with you all. For today's episode, Mike Bellucci got extended a couple of days ago. Going to catch up on that. Give my thoughts on that for you all. Teddy Bluger had a quite an eventful night last night in the beauty league. <laughs> that was something else. And we'll also get to the Paul Stastny signing in Carolina and why I wish the penguins could have done that if they had cap space. And last but not least, some robo penguin talk because that has just been blowing up on social media on Tuesday and Wednesday. So that's all coming up right after this drop. Your locked on penguins. Your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Penguins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. You want to follow me on Twitter, Hunter Hodes, follow the show's Twitter at LO. Arnsgrove Penguins, and of course, thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. It's great to be back. Um, you know, I'm just going to oh, – I'll save something uh, for the end. Um, but again, great to be back talking Penguins hockey with you guys um, after a couple days away. I'll have also have episodes on Thursday and Friday for you all, and then we'll be back to three days a week still next week. So a couple of days ago on Monday when I was down in Virginia Beach for my granddad's funeral, uh, the Penguins re-signed Mike Vellucci to a two-year contract extension. Ron Hextall um, in his announcement said he's a dedicated coach who has proven to be a valuable addition since joining Pittsburgh. We are excited to have him back behind the bench for two more seasons. You know, again, <clears throat> more job security for someone who I think was pretty close to take, getting a head coaching job on um, this offseason. You know, he was interviewed for multiple positions. I, I think Elliot Friedman said he had multiple interviews in Philadelphia. Also had, had I think, an interview or two in Boston. And I believe he was a finalist in San Jose. Um, as well. So he, he interviewed for at least three teams during <clears throat> um, <clears throat> this offseason. season. I think if he has a good year under Mike Sullivan this year, and we'll see how the coaching market is next year, definitely think he could be a head coach in the near future for an NHL team. Yeah, he's He's been a finalist for a couple of those jobs this close. Um, if you're, if you're asking me, you know, he's been the, as the, one of the Penguins assistant coaches for the last couple of seasons Remember, does the penalty kill, does the forwards. The PK finished third in NHL last year, 84.4%. Ninth overall since Felucci joined the, uh, the team. So little, not, not that good in his first year. Rebounded big time last year, but still in the playoffs. Definitely, you know, did not like what I saw from that unit. I thought, they, they, again, they were just doing everything you didn't want them to do against a red hot Rangers power play. There were just multiple moments where, you know, the game was, you know, in the bounce, especially in game seven when Brock McGinn took that stupid penalty and you, you need a PK from one of the five best units in the league and you can't get it. And there was that happened in game five, happened in game six. Sure, some of those, you know, it's not on the PK, but in a couple of others, they were. And, you know, I, I want to see the unit be more aggressive. I'm hoping Gallucci, you know, adds a wrinkle or two to his unit going into the season. I'm also hoping that maybe he changes up the configurations of who's on the unit. You know, one player I would actually love to see start killing penalties next season is someone who was good at it when he was in Toronto. And that's because Perry Kapanen, remember, you know, I remember watching, I believe it was the 2018-19 season when they played the Bruins in the first round. And, you know, Kapanen was just a menace on that um pk you know he, he even had i think one or two shorthanded goals one of them being in game seven um that ended up i think he, um it tied the game going into the third period before the leafs had one of their collapses but you know with how speedy he is you know how quick his release is how good of, usually a, how decent of a four checker he is you know I, I think he would do 
a decent job at it. And his defensive metrics last season were also pretty solid. He has not really had a lot of PK time in Pittsburgh yet, but that that is something that I would really like to see. The stats back up, back it up. The eye test backs it up. Um, we'll see if maybe Valucci decides to change that up um, a little bit next season. But, you know, overall thoughts on this, I think I'm okay with it. You know, you know, is he going to stay for this full two seasons? I'm honestly kind of saying no, just because I think he is going to get a head coaching job in the next couple of years. You can definitely see that, you know, <clears throat> teams are impressed by what he's done in Pittsburgh and in Wilkesbury. You know, he's been around the game a long, long time. You know, he was coaching Wilkesbury before he got promoted um, to um, the Penguins. You know, he was with the Carolina Hurricanes from 2014 19, was their assistant general manager, director of hockey operations there. Also, was the Charlotte Checkers head coach, where he, you know, he was 97 and 43 and 8 in 152 games. Um, so, you know, he, he's, he was also with. Plymouth Whalers of the OHL for 14 seasons from 2001 to 2014. Again, he, he he has been around this game a long time, and I do think it's it's going to come here in the next couple of years where he will get his first ever um, an NHL coaching job. Um, I, I, again, I, I really think that's coming up for him. But so you know, overall, I guess I know the entire staff is going to come back next year. Right move to me. Um, you know, maybe you can argue that maybe like one of Reardon. Or Valucci was, you know, or should go. Though I think in both those cases, I also I think a fair argument on the other side would be that a lot of the Penguins' issues with their special teams units that they coach um, are more execution-wise than the style. But I think in Valucci's case, with the penalty kills, but both, I don't think the Penguins were executing, and I don't think um, Valucci's plan against the Rangers was working at all. It worked against some other teams during the season, but, you know, they were also being a lot more aggressive than they were against the Rangers. I think they, um, just wanted, like, I don't know. They, they, they wanted the Rangers to sit back and, you know, have these passing lanes open up and develop and all that stuff. But, you know, it, and they did, it's just, it gave them more time to actually set up when, you know, the four checker at the top, when they run that wedge plus one, is not just causing havoc. And when that's not happening, do you see a unit that's playing scared, frightened, passive, whatever word you want to call it. So I do want to see that change. Actually, I think forward-wise, Bellucci's done a really good job with them. Jake Ensel just had another 40-goal season. Um, Penguins had numerous players score double-digit goals. That's your Dayton Hunt was back to that. Ricard, Raquel, obviously. You know, even Kasperi Kapanen, who had a bad year, was back to double-digit goals. Brock McGinn, double-digit goals. You know, almost all their forwards hit double digits last year. So I've been pretty impressed with him with that regard. And again, if he can maybe change up that configuration, PK, maybe Sid and Jake could also get some PK shifts. I think that would be a lot of fun as well. So we'll see. But overall, Yins, I'm fine with it. I'm not going to, you know, get my panties in a waddle over that. But coming up in the second segment, we're going to get into. Teddy Bluger's rather chaotic night um, on Tuesday in, in the beauty league and why, you know, I c- kind of don't want to see him fighting too much before the season uh, and before training camp starts, I should say. But before I get to that, bet online is the fastest and easiest way to check on all of your betting means. You can find all of your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. You can find reviews and news of every league, including major league baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information. From live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts, they have you covered. You can head to BetOnline today or use your phone to learn more about the trends in action. That's BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, I'm back here on this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter, at Hunter Hodes. You can also follow the show's Twitter, at Lower Score Penguins. So, again, a very chaotic night in the beauty league. I remember I was talking about that the other week. You know, it's a Minnesota-based summer league, allows professional and college players um, to have fun, play, and also they're raising money for local charities. So it, it's for a great cause. Sure, you know, they're playing hockey during the dead time of the NHL se- of the NHL offseason, but it really is for a great cause. And the playoffs got underway. Um, and Teddy Bluger, he uh he had quite a game. Um his team won 12 to 3 for his his team is called team, team tradition they eliminated team element and they advanced to the cup final which will be held actually tonight i have not seen a winner um just yet and he had four goals and three assists for his team but he also 
had a fight against Vinny Letary. He signed with the St. Louis Blues over the summer. They exchanged words, skating at the length of the ice after Bluger scored his fourth goal. And man, the two dropped the gloves. Um, I would say Teddy Bluger won that fight. Uh, Letary was pretty bloodied after that. But, you know, as long as he's not getting hurt, you know, okay, whatever. Looks like also Teddy has grown his hair out a little bit, which is, you know, I mean, I guess we're twinning with that here. My hair is looking crazy. But, you know, four goals, seven points, getting him in a fight, you know, nice little, I guess, would that qualify as a Gordie Howe hat trick? Yeah, I believe that does qualify as a Gordie Howe hat trick. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 it does. Um, and the De Beauty League, their Twitter account put out a funny uh, SpongeBob meme. But players don't care about De Beauty League. I'll just leave, and they put like, I'll just leave this here. Perfect, perfect tweet. You know, well played, I think, for that. That's for sure. And apparently, it was the first fight. This is according to Taylor Haas. First fight in the history of the W League. It was founded in 2015. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess when players are playing for charity and they're playing for fun, you're not going to see a lot of fights. This isn't the NHL game where a stakes are a lot higher. This is just an exhibition game where, you know, nothing too major is at stake. But, you know, I guess a player did not like it that he, he – that or, a, a player that, that like Vinny Letary – I cannot speak right now. Um, a player like Vinny Letary – did not like that someone like Bluger scored four goals in a game that, you know, at the end of the day, um, doesn't really mean too much. So Teddy Bluger's team, they'll be playing team TRIA. That team includes Jason Zucker. Um, his team eliminated Jake Gensel's team in the semifinals. Um, Ryan Paling, he's also been playing in it, but I think his team um, is out. And for those who want to know how good, uh, great Jake Gensel was, this comes courtesy of Taylor as well. 37 points in eight games, 19 goals, ranked second in the league behind Vinny Letary. Jake is something else. 37 points in eight games, that's – I'm not even going to try to do the math there, but I know that's <laughs> well, basically over four points per game. Uh, just an absolute menace. <laughs> you know, it's almost – again, that's almost five points a game. Uh, you know, if, he, if he did that in the NHL this season, I think he would probably command 12 or 13 million or something like that. But, you know, good to see that – you know, a lot of the Penguins players are playing well in the league. And, you know, um, best wishes to Bluger in the championship game. I'll have more on that for Thursday's episode to see if his team did end up winning or if Jason Zucker's team ends up winning. Um, also, some other news that I saw on Tuesday. So this was, again, I was, you know, in Virginia Beach, my granddad's funeral. And I saw Carolina, they signed uh, Paul Stastny to a one-year, $1.5 million contract. Yes, I understand Stastny is a bit older. You know, I think at this point he's, what, you know, 36, 37, somewhere around there. But, you know, he, he is still a legitimately good player. He can play in your – he can play um, – geez, I cannot – just making sure I got the um, stats up. You know, he can play on your top line, can play on your second line, can play on your third line. Last year, 21 goals, 45 points, 71 games. Yeah, again, for someone that's 36. That's really solid. And the fact that he's only making $1.5 million, that's a bargain for Carolina. And I would have loved if the Penguins got their hands on him. I understand they're over the cap right now. They don't have any room to sign someone right now unless they do make a trade. But, man, if they did have $2 million of cap space lying around that you know they, ha they haven't spent yet, that would have just been a perfect addition to the team. Someone that can you know really complement the forwards. You, know, you can run someone something like Gensel, Crosby, Rust. You could put Paul Stassing with Evgeny Malkin and Ricard Raquel, and then move down Jason Zucker with you know Jeff Carter and Denton Heinen on your third line. Fourth line, you can run Teddy Bluger with Brock Ligon and whoever you want is your 12th forward. I mean, that's a really solid top 12 forward group right there. Um, it's it is a freaking shame that Stassny, you know, signed so cheap, and especially on a team like Carolina. And you know, I think they definitely needed that. I don't think Carolina is as deep as they were last year. You know, played 71 games for the Jets last year, had 52% of the shot attempts when he was on the ice. Um, the Jets also had 56% of the actual goals, 53% of the expected goals, 52% of the scoring chances, 50% of the high danger chances, and then 60% of the high danger goals. So he was um, on a bad Jets team that usually does not have good underlying numbers, especially under Paul Maurice, who was there for a majority of that season before he ended up resigning. Um towards you know the end of it um those are strong numbers and you know he's still kicking you know 
pretty nicely, I would say. Um, at this point, this was actually his first. This was his first twenty goal season since 2013-14 when he was with the Colorado Avalanche. That is how good he was last year for the Jets. His 45 points, most he's had since 2015-16 when he was with the St. Louis Blues. And, and that's on a Jets team. Again, that is not good. I think he can definitely have 45 to 50 points next year on a Carolina team, you know, playing on, on, on the first. I don't think he'll play on the first line, but maybe on the second line or something like that. You know, I think that was a, that's a good move for Carolina, especially because Patrick Reddy, um, probably is not going to be back till February at the earliest, maybe looking at March, even April. The Achilles injuries are very tricky. You really have no idea, you know, how long you're going to be out, you know, until you just, you know, you see the progress that you're making. So anytime in that time frame, but you know, that's just, that's, I think the main reason that Carolina wanted to go out and make that move. And again, I think he would have been a perfect fit on the Penguins on any, any of their top three lines. You're not going to put them on the fourth line, but would have been a really, smooth fit for them. So I want to take some, I'll uh, take a few minutes to talk about that move. And, you know, again, why I was definitely high on Sassing. I touched on some free agents a few weeks ago and he was definitely um, on that list. Uh, coming up in the final segment for today's episode, we're going to get into the Robo Penguin and why it's looking like my scoop from a few weeks ago is going to turn out. So that's all coming up right after this commercial break. All right, I'm back here in this episode of the Locked on Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. You can also follow the show's Twitter at LO underscore Penguins. So um, last night, it was Fanatics. They they screwed up. I'll say that. Um, they leaked the Robo Penguin design on their official site. Um, and it looks like that is going to be the reverse retro jerseys this season. Remember, I scooped this on the podcast on my Twitter account a few weeks ago. I had heard from someone who you know, knows someone in the organization. Well, I yeah, I had heard from someone who is closer to the team than I am, who also knows a couple of people even closer to the team that said that this is going to happen and that the Robo Penguin is going to return for the first time in over a decade. And that is a weird cricket noise right outside my door. Hopefully, not many too, not many people heard that. Um, and you know this this. Caught a lot of attention on Penguins Twitter. I, I put out the tweet, if you didn't see it, on my Twitter account saying soon dot 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 with a beautiful photoshopped bar down Robo Penguin black jersey on Sidney Crosby. It is absolutely gorgeous. Got somehow 2,200 likes, 163 retweets. If you haven't seen it, you, know, you can go check it out. That is the jersey that I want to see back next season in, in some kind of um, reverse retro form. I think it's the best one. And, you know, it, it's funny. You know, there, there's definitely a lot of people that don't like the Robo Pen because, you know, it's from a time where they didn't win a cup in. You know, it came also in the Howard Baldwin era, who, yes, I understand is a really crappy owner. He is the reason why the team was bankrupt before Mario Lemieux brought the team. <clears throat> and here's a fun fact for some of you, if you don't know this. Um, <clears throat> if you ever encounter someone, <clears throat> excuse me, that says, Oh yeah, the, the 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 fan attendance was so bad back then. There were no Penguin fans. That's why they almost sold the team. You know that is not true. They almost sold the team because Howard Baldwin was bankrupt and he had no idea how to be an NHL owner. It had nothing to do with fan attendance. That is the facts. But so, but hopefully, you know, if again, if some some idiot tries to say that to you, just say what say what I just told you all to them. And again. I get it, you know, David Volbeck happened, you know, 96 happened with the Panthers and all this other stuff, but it is a beautiful jersey. It's time to reverse the trend, that stupid losing trend, and win a cup in, with those jerseys. They are absolutely gorgeous. They're one of the best jerseys in the franchise history. I will not stand for the slander, and I think at least two-thirds of the fan base actually like it. I, I'm, I'm pretty positive. I, I'm pretty confident in saying that again, there is definitely a large portion of the fan base that doesn't like it. I mean, you know, just check my mentions. You have a good, good amount of people saying um, it's not good, and they have a lot of people saying it's good. You know, that's just that, that's how things are. I think at this point for anything in the world, but um, I think when it comes to this jersey, the, the new ownership is probably going to go with the majority. And again, I do think that um, most of the fans like this jersey. 
it's really good and it's going to sell a whole lot of merchandise. I think it's going to be one of the biggest reasons why they're bringing it back. You know, the Penguins, I, I don't want them to change their home and away jerseys. I think they have the best home and away kits in the league, especially with the, the diagonal Penguin. Nothing beats it. Absolutely nothing beats that. Um, even the Pittsburgh diagonal is awesome. You can wear that, you know, 10 to 15 games a year. But for, for this reverse retro jersey, you can also wear that for another 10 to 12 games. A year and again i think a lot of people are going to spend quite a bit of money on it and you know i'd be foolish um to not point out that i think a, a good reason for this coming back is because mary lemieux is not the majority owner anymore i've heard it on very good authority and i think you know most fans would probably know this as well that mario hates those jerseys he has never been a fan of them so the new ownership's in they're like hey we're going to bring this back you're not owning the team anymore this is what's going to bring good business. And um, by all accounts, it, it looks like it's only a matter of time before this announcement is made. As for the Winter Classic jersey, again, do not have any updates on that. All I've heard is that the Penguin logo is not going to be on it, and it's just going to be a massive, massive throwback. So we'll have to see if there is an update on that at some point. But, you know, I'm sure Penguin Twitter and all that is just going to be on fire for the coming days about the Robo Pen. We'll have to see if any uh, of this, you know, gets more confirmed. But, you know, again, I checked with the same person last night after that leak came out and he, you know, he talked to a couple of people after I texted him in and he said, yeah, like the, he basically told me like it was only a matter of time before this was going to get leaked. There you have it. So um, get used to it. It looks like we are going to have the Robo Penguin back for next year. So let me know your thoughts on that. Do you like the Robo Pen? Do you hate it? I mean, do, would you think Paul Stastny would have been a good fit with the Penguins? What do you think of the Mike Bellucci contract extension? Just let me know in the comments, or you can also DM me on social media um, and all of that. Um, real quick here, just want to dedicate this episode to um, my granddad, who, again, I know I touched on the beginning of the episode, passed away at the age of 93. Um, someone who is such an inspiration in my life, someone who always you know pushed me to, you know, do the most and to just, you know, do everything at 110%. And I really hope I've made you proud, you know, throughout these last 25 years. Um, you weren't just a family member to me. You were one of the best friends I could ever have. And um, I love you. Hope you tell grandmom and my Gila say hi and, you know, fly high forever.